So my big project for this summer, uh, as you can see, is going to be a parts caster, in this case a jazz master. I've always wanted one, figured why not uh, build it, try to video whether I succeed or fail in the endeavor. Um, I've got an alder body, just standard jazz master route, maple neck with a rosewood fingerboard and stainless steel jumbo frets. This is kind of my dream guitar, super excited to work on it. Um, and I'm going to be doing all of the finishing, all of the uh, installation of hardware, all of the electronics and everything like that. And I'll be documenting in separate videos, working on the neck and on the body in various steps like painting and doing the clear coat. Uh, so for products on this, just to talk about it a little bit, I've got a couple of test pieces that I've made and I've decided on doing a automotive paint finish. Uh, this is GM Bright Aqua Metallic. Really like the way it looks, kind of like a turquoise aqua color. Tried a couple of other spray paints, didn't really like how they went on. Uh, that's the one I'll be going with. So you can see that here, along with the primer I'm going to use. On top of that, for a clear coat, I will be using a urethane product, water-based, called uh, Bright Tone, which you can see in a lot of videos online right here. I have never seen a video online of anyone putting this over the top of acrylic spray paint, uh, but I sent an email to the manufacturer of this and talked about it, and they say it should work, and I'll have a test piece ahead of time that I'm about to spray right now. I'll talk about that later. For the neck, I've got a test piece here that I've made. I'm planning to actually stain the neck to give it a little bit of a color to it on the maple portion uh, with trans tint amber dye from Stumac. Uh, and then I'll be finishing on top of it with true oil, including trying to bury a water slide decal on the headstock with this true oil. So that's the plan. Um, if you're watching this, don't assume that I know what I'm doing at all. I've only ever finished one other full instrument, uh, made plenty of mistakes there and learned a lot from that. Hopefully this time goes even better and uh, maybe I'll put some information out there about how that bright tone works over the top of acrylic spray paint and what luck I have burying a headstock decal under true oil. Anyway, stay tuned. So I'm going to get started on the body. Uh, this is a warmth body made out of alder. Uh, it's got poly sealer on it already, and it's quite smooth just straight from warmth. So all I'm going to do with this is mount it on this arm so I can hang it from a spray stand to spray it. And I'm going to clean the body with some uh, denatured alcohol. Uh, let it dry out really, really well, just make sure there's no dust on it, nothing like that. And then I'm just going to spray primer, uh, actually primer that is this automated duplicolor primer. Uh, just right over the sealer. And I've been warming this in a, a, a bucket of warm water for a couple of minutes so it will spray really well. And uh, anyway, hopefully that'll work out pretty well. Uh, I'll show that process and then move on to the color code. If you're wondering what all the noise is during all of this footage, uh, I'm running this dehumidifier in my garage where I'm spray painting. Uh, set it about rel relative humidity 50%. Uh, just to keep things consistent with dry times and make sure that the piece when it sits overnight in the garage is continuing to dry. Uh, I'm also avoiding spraying when it's too hot. It's really, really humid and hot right now in Ohio at the end of June. We've had a lot of rain. Um, so I'm, I'm only spraying early in the morning essentially when it's as close to 70 degrees as possible. And I'm trying to run this as much as possible. Uh, obviously the humidity spikes when I sort of burp or vent air out of the garage, but at least while the piece is sitting and drying, uh, I think that this helps to keep things consistent. So for my spray setup, I have a spray stand that I made out of just a piece of junk furniture I got at a garage sale, like a TV stand and drilled through and put some PVC pipe. And then I, I actually mount the guitar body using the, uh, the holes drilled for the neck mount. Uh, onto a jig that then goes into the spray stand so that I can manipulate the guitar. Um, you can see some tutorials online. A lot of people have setups like this. Um, and I just put a little bit of a plastic curtain to catch overspray behind the guitar. For the product that I'm using here, it's just the regular Duplicolor car paint that you can get at AutoZone. This is the Scratch Filler Primer in gray. As far as technique goes, uh, this is really my first time spray painting anything. Um, it's, it's very easy to do. Um, I shake the cans really thoroughly before I start, and then I tip them upside down and spray a little bit of gas through, which if there's any paint residue lodged in the line that actually feeds the paint into the nozzle, that'll clear it out. Um, these cans have really nice nozzles that spray kind of like a wide fan pattern. 
Um, and I'm just starting with the edges of the guitar, making sure that I get a coat on the edge. Uh, the reason for that is that some overspray will go over the side and get on the face and the back, which are you know the surfaces that you really care about. And then I'm just sweeping over the back and then the front in wide, slow patterns, and I'm overlapping about 50% on each spray. So these cans recommend that you apply two to three coats, and that should be sufficient for the primer to fully cover what you're doing, give good paint adhesion. I definitely wound up doing three, uh, especially because I had sort of a problem with the grain of the wood continuing to show through even after the primer was on it. And I probably went a little bit heavier than I needed to, but that's okay because this is sandable, and I did wind up level sanding the surface before I moved on to painting. Um, I'm going to fast forward ahead just a little bit to the third coat where something happened. I actually had a can that started spitting, and uh, when that occurred, I, I noticed it. You'll actually see that there's kind of a gap where I, I quit spraying and switch out and get a new can. Uh, it spat some gobs of paint onto the body, uh, kind of like a rough surface that you don't want. You do have to watch out for that. I probably should have been shaking the cans more and maybe clearing the lines a little bit more often than I was. But it's really not that bad because you can sand this out. It, it's actually pretty forgiving if you have anything happen. Even a run can be sanded out if you're just careful. And so with a new can, then I was able to just continue spraying, no problem. Um, and this wound up taking about two and a half cans of primer to fully coat the surface. And keep in mind that that's going fairly thick, uh, trying to bury some of the wood grain. So three coats of primer are now done on this. It's been a day and a half drying, just sitting on the spray stand. Um, it's pretty dry. I can't smell any, any solvent on it anymore or anything. So I think I'm ready to sand uh, the primer at this point. A couple of things to note. Um, one is that uh, one of the cans, I think on the final coat, you probably saw it, um, but I, I switched a can out on that last coat. One of the cans was spitting pretty badly uh, at a couple of points, sort of on the back here, as well as a little bit on the front. Um, so there's these kind of gobs of paint, especially here, right here. I don't know if you can really see them in the bad lighting on the camera. Um, you gotta watch out for that. I was pretty careful and I tried to tilt the can upside down and spray it out and shake it a lot and do some tricks, but it, it was a little bit rough at times. Um, shouldn't be too big a deal because for the primer, I'm gonna sand it all out anyway and, much level it off. The other thing is that uh, with this primer, I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, Let's see if I can get a good angle on it. You can see a little bit of the wood grain coming through even with three, 30, uh, three pretty thick uh, coats of primer on it. Um, I saw that a little bit with my test piece as well. I didn't sand this at all before I started, but I did sand the hell out of my test piece and it still happened. Um, I'm hoping that when I level this with this 800 grit sandpaper, that uh, I'll take most of that out and it won't really be a big deal, but I'm not really looking for a look where you can see any of the grain through it. Um, a third note, uh, I sprayed most of this with the garage door closed and figured I'm wearing a respirator, I'll go outside to clean air um, immediately and let it kind of get touch dry before I open the garage up and vent things out, uh, trying to get you know dust to a minimum, avoid getting any bugs on or anything like that. And uh, when you do that, one, you probably shouldn't do that because even with a respirator, the, the fumes concentrate. But uh, worse is that a lot of gray, uh, gray primer is now all over my garage floor and settled all over everything. So uh, don't do that if you ever go to spray one of these. Probably shouldn't do that. And definitely wear a respirator and a mask when sanding anything. So I'm going to sand this with 800 grit. I'll probably just speed this up or something. You can look up a lot of videos on the internet about how to sand things. Um, but I'll just be looking to roughly level it out and get rid of any really bad spots texturally so that the next coat of paint goes on real smooth. So far as sanding goes, I'm using P800 grit, which is a pretty fine finishing grit that's not going to take a whole lot of material off, uh, so you, you don't have to be super duper careful. Um, I'm using a pretty minimum amount of pressure because this is really not a hard finish, it's just a, a primer that's kind of able to be sanded so that you get a level surface. I'm being really careful to avoid edges. 
Um, I'm always using a sanding block. If you sand with your fingers, you'll wind up causing runs and ripples in the surface that'll spoil the finish. Um, and I'm just going over this and making really sure to get all of the places where the can was spitting off and to try to level out any places where I can still see wood grain. So after I finished sanding the primer until it was very smooth, ready to move on to the color coat, um, for the color, I'm using a Duplicolor product again. This is GM Bright Aqua Metallic. Uh, it's an acrylic lacquer. You can get it at AutoZone, auto parts stores, just like the primer. Real easy to find, uh, and hopefully you can catch the product code in case you really like the shade uh, from this little picture in the bottom left. As far as the technique for this, it's pretty much the same as the primer. You're probably going on a little bit lighter, and uh, it's a little bit tricky with the metallic color. Um, if you're not careful and don't really overlap your sprays very well, you'll wind up with regions that are uneven. And also, it, it tends to look a little bit uneven as it dries, because some areas of the guitar body will dry faster than others. I found that the end grain portions on the horns of the guitar dried really, really fast and would sometimes leave an unusual looking texture, as well as spots on the back where the routes in the front were. Um, I ended up doing three uh, coats and then a little bit of extra, kind of like touch-up work, uh, hitting a few areas that I felt were particularly uneven and kind of actually really uh, getting a heavy coating on it, which you don't really want to do because it'll add a lot of dry time and be difficult to manage. Um, but I was pretty happy with the result I got at the end uh, doing it this way. And if you just kind of watch, it's, it's exactly the same technique as before. You're overlapping sprays, trying to get about 50%. Uh, and then just gradually building up color in two to three light coats. And as with the primer, I'm going to show the first coat and then speed up the second and third coat uh, just so the video doesn't take forever. So this is it after uh, three coats plus a little bit of touch-up action that I wound up having to do on it. Uh, a couple of places that are end grain and uh, various spots on the guitar are really, really hard to get an even coat, and it seems to evaporate at different rates on the end grain stuff. Not sure if the uh, primer didn't seal it as well as I had hoped. Uh, if I had to do this over again, I'd probably say that it was a little bit difficult to bury all of the grains, so I'd probably sand the body smoother. Maybe I would even really sand it up and then apply my own sanding sealer, a different product than what came on the body for Mormoth over it, and uh, then level sand it again. Right now, though, this looks pretty good. I ended up using about three full cans of spray paint on it, which really surprised me. Um, I had burned through a, a couple doing test pieces, and I, I figured they'd last longer. And I found I had to go a little bit heavier than I expected uh, just to get an even coverage. Um, maybe if you're really, really good with spray paint and you've done a lot of spray painting before, you could find that you get away with less. Um, it's not perfectly even right now, but it's pretty good. And it's definitely shiny and metallic looking on all the edges and everything. I'm hoping that when I give it a little bit of a scuff sand and then put the clear coat over it, it'll uh, bring it out even more and it, it'll wind up looking just as nice as my test pieces did. Um, 
But this is gonna wrap it for this video. I'm probably just gonna let this hang overnight and then bring it into the house and let it sit for maybe a week or even two weeks in a, a nice air conditioned environment. Uh, and once I can't smell any solvent from it at all anymore, and I'm sure it's totally dry, uh, then I'll move on to the clear coat step. I wanna make sure it's completely dry because with the water base over the top of it, if any vapor tries to escape, it'll wind up messing up the finish. Uh, so that'll be it for this video. And I'll probably start working on the neck while this waits uh, one to two weeks before the clear coat. So thanks.